Well, hi there, Shelley and Kevin. I'm going to go through briefly how I've been embedding things into quizzes in Canvas. And just, just to reiterate, the reason I'm using the quiz function is because I'm eventually going to export these to the Canvas Commons, where anybody can grab them who uses Canvas. And that includes K-12 teachers and high schools who are using Canvas. When you, when you guys get into the Canvas and you go to the Commons, you'll discover there's a whole, there's a whole slew of stuff there. Not necessarily for geology. There is some. But that's what we're trying to add to. So it might be a really great place, Shelly, for you to add some of what you're working on with 106 if it's uh, if it's OER. So anyway, I'd love to talk, talk more about that with you. Anyway, right now I'm working on the week five VFE. And so I've got I've got a quiz open. I'm working on it. I've, I've just been working on the first question. So I'm working on the second one now. You can see I've had no problem embedding uh, 3D models from Sketchfab. And those are relatively easy because all I have to do is go over here, you know, choose the model I want to work with. In this case, it was a this this kind of cool image of Crater Lake with its bathymetry and all that. Um, and then I go click on embed, and I grab the code, and I go over here to uh, the quiz function here. I'm going to go ahead and update this question so I can add it to the next question. And I'm going to go ahead and hit new question. I usually knock, you know, return, return down a, a line or two so I can make sure I have room to do what I need to do later. Um, and then I'm going to go and click on this little button here and then embed and boom. So assuming that's actually what I want, there it is. And I can go and make this little make this thing bigger and start asking questions. And I'll probably go do that. Uh, right after I finish this prior this 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 question up here now this one as you can see what I've done is I've created a, a side by side image here of this particular gigapan and so um, anyway so let, let's say <clears throat> let's say I didn't like what I did here and I wanted to uh, get rid of it so this is what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of it and okay it's gone. So I want to put that image back in there. The only way I've been able to do this is to go to gigapan.com, find the image I want, and you notice there is this embed tab, which should work, right? So I've copied this code. I should be able to go over to Canvas, paste that code in there, but you know what? It pastes in there, but you don't see anything. It creates a it creates a space. So for instance, I'll I'll show you how that works. If I go back here and I click on the code and I copy it and I go and do the same thing. Click on the insert media tab, embed, and boom, you get nothing, right? Not, I mean, clearly there's something there, but it's not showing up. So we don't know. And I've talked to our instructional designers. They have not been able to figure out what's going on with that. We, we tried playing around with the HTML. Uh, it's <clears throat> so what I've been doing is I've been going up to when I when I find an image I want uh, I've been going up here to the URL grabbing the code off of here copying that and then taking it over to Giga Macro and then at Giga Macro you can create your own account viewer viewer.gigamacro.com and students can create their own accounts anybody can so. And students need to create their own accounts if they're going to use these. And that's the one thing that is a little frustrating. See, at Gigapan, of course, you don't have to do that. Um, so anything I export, you know, I'm going to have to have instructions that say, you know, students need to create their own Giga Macro accounts. Now, I have not been in touch yet with Giga Macro. I would assume that this is this would be good exposure for them uh, to have potentially a lot of people using their stuff. But anyway, so... I'm going to go add an image. I click on the little, once I log in, I click on the little add button over here and I paste my, my uh, code down in there. Once I do that, hit add, which I've already done that three times with this image. So my image will show up there. And then what I can do, let's say I want that image. Now I've put, I've created a collection of images. So uh, you, know, I've, you can create collections as well. You just have to go to the site and play around with it. What I've done here is I create a side-by-side. -side. This is what I really want to put in there. So I'm going to go ahead and hit share. 
And again, I'm going to hit embed code and it's copied. So I go over here and I go to insert media and I click on embed again and voila. And there it is. The nice thing about this is that I can make students can go and make it full screen and they can, you know, play around with these images. The only drawback is that um, there's no way to do any measurement. And that is a little frustrating. But even if you go in here and you set the scale, which certainly you, you can do, uh, and you saw these three tools down here, there is no real, there is no way of measuring. Although I haven't put it in full screen to see whether I could actually do that or not. Maybe I'll go see if I can do that with one of my other VFPs that I know I had. Uh, because that would actually add another capability to this. That the reason I wanted to use Giga Macro to begin with was because I wanted to be able to use measurement, uh, and I haven't been able to do that up to, the, up to this point. So I'm going to save what I'm working on there, and I'm going to go into the modules. I'm in my I'm in my full course right now, so let's just let's go over here to the uh, this Moho one. Yes, I know I need to uncapitalize that. Okay, so let's go back. Actually, I want I don't want to do it as I want. I want to go back and just preview it. I'm going to preview the quiz, and I'm going to go down here to. Um, yeah, there's those instructions again. Uh, quiz instructions. I need to figure out, Callan, what I how, how I what I did there. All right. I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, get to one of these questions that actually has a um, wow! It really shows you every single one of those questions has has the instructions right there. That's convenient. I like that. All right, here's one. Um, although I did, I don't think I ever set the scale on this one. And I couldn't set the scale on that one. Let's try jumping down here to seven. Nope, that wasn't one either. Let's see here. Oh, that's a, that's a, that's a 3D model. All right, well, anyway, I'll have to go and check that out. But I don't want to spend any more time on this. So anyway, um, you guys have I've bored you to death as well. I hope what I've shown you is useful. That's how I've been getting the stuff, the stuff in there. So if you have any other questions, let me know. But uh, I look forward to chatting with you guys about how to do some more of these. All right. And, uh, and, how, and best practices and all that good stuff. So anyway, have a great evening. Talk to you later.